Hi, this is Marty from Photoshop Art House. I'm going to show you how to transform photos into the look of naturalistic watercolor paintings. I provided this watercolor paper texture that you could download. Its link is in my video's description or project files. Let's make it into a pattern by going to Edit and Define Pattern. When this window pops up, just click OK. Open a photo you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. Before we start adding filters to it, it's important to note that some of the filter setting amounts I'll be using are based on an image whose resolution is 72 pixels per inch. So, let's check your photo by going to Image and Image Size. Keep in mind, you're welcome to keep your photo's original resolution. However, if it's not 72 pixels per inch, just adjust some of the filter setting amounts to get similar results as mine. If you want to adjust its width and height, make sure the chain link icon is active before you do to retain your photo's aspect ratio. Also, if you are adjusting its size and or resolution, make sure you see Preserve Details 2.0 and Resample is checked. Preserve Details 2.0 is an AI-powered tool that can upscale images while preserving details. If you don't see it in your list, go to Edit, Preferences, Technology Previews, and Enable Preserve Details 2.0 Upscale. You'll see it the next time you start Photoshop. To make sure your image has the correct contrast, Go to Image and Auto Contrast. Next, we'll convert our image into a smart object so we can add more filters to it non-destructively as well as replace it with a different photo without having to redo most of the effects. To do this, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Go to Filter, Artistic, and Dry Brush. In earlier versions, click Filter Gallery. Then click the Artistic folder and click Dry Brush. The brush size and brush detail are 10 and the texture is 1. Go back to Filter, Artistic, and Cut Out. The number of levels is 8, the edge simplicity is 0, and the edge fidelity is 1. Click OK or press Enter or Return. Double-click the icon to the right of Cutout to open its blending options. Open the list and click Pin Light. Go to Filter, Blur, and Smart Blur. The radius is 25, the threshold is 100, and the quality is high. Double-click the icon to the right of Smart Blur to open its blending options and click Screen. Reduce its opacity to 50%. Go to Filter, Stylize, and Find Edges. Open the blending options of Find Edges and click Soft Light. Let's collapse the Smart Filters to save some space in the Layers panel. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill this empty layer with the watercolor paper pattern I provided. First, we need to fill it with any color. I'll fill it with my background color by pressing Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Double-click the layer to open its layer style window. Click Pattern Overlay. If it doesn't fill with the watercolor paper texture, open your list of patterns, scroll to the bottom, and click it. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is 
The angle is 0 degrees, and for this example, I'll make it scale 25%. Change its blend mode to multiply. We see it doesn't change. I'll press Ctrl or Command Z to undo the last step. To change its blend mode, we first need to make it into a smart object or create a new layer above it and merge it with the pattern by shift clicking the pattern layer to make it active as well and pressing Ctrl or Command E. Now, change its blend mode to multiply. Make the top subject active and click the adjustment layer icon. Click Vibrance. Make the vibrance 100% and increase its saturation depending on the color intensity of your image. The difference between vibrance and saturation is vibrance adjusts the intensity of muted colors while the saturation increases the intensity of all colors. Click the Adjustments panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Adjustments. Click Levels. Make the input white level 50 and the input midtones 0.9. Hide the bottom layer and make the layer above it active. We'll make a black layer mask next to it by Alt or Option clicking the layer mask icon. This masks out the entire painting. We'll reveal back our painting by brushing white in the layer mask. White reveals and black conceals. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Scroll down to the Legacy Brushes folder and open it. Scroll to the Wet Media Brushes and open it. Click the Watercolor Textured Surface brush and press Enter or Return. At the top, reduce its opacity anywhere between 60 and 70 percent and its flow anywhere between 50 and 60 percent. The difference between opacity and flow is this. Flow controls how quickly a brush builds up color, while opacity sets the transparency or opacity of the brush. Smoothing does what it says. It smooths out the brush strokes, which isn't necessary in this case. To make your brush bigger or smaller, Make sure the caps lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Brush over the paper to reveal your subject through the layer mask. When we release our brush and then reapply our brush over the strokes we already made, notice those areas become more visible. The more we brush over them, the more visible they become. I find that images look best when the areas outside the subject are more transparent, so before I brush those areas, I'll reduce the brush's opacity and flow. Continue to adjust its opacity and flow to finesse your watercolor painting. To remove paint, press X on your keyboard to reverse your foreground and background colors so black will be on your brush. I'll increase the opacity and flow and brush over areas from where I want to remove the colors. If you want to reveal colors again, just press X again. This is Marty from Photoshop Art House. Thanks for watching.